Hi, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to share something that I found out that I think will provide a lot of value to the PS3 Yellow Light of Death repair community. And <laughs> I had a viewer reach out to me and provide me with their broken PS3 to see if I can repair it. By the way, this is the console. Thank you for sharing that with me. Um, so I took on this challenge and tried to look up all the different unique reasons why the yellow, yellow light of death would happen. And I see a lot of feedback with the token capacitors, um, having some BGA issues, probably needing a reflow or a reball, and that wasn't sufficient for me. So I did a lot of research, and I found that the PS3 will store 20 error logs inside the syscon. And if you can read the syscon, it'll tell you what the exact error is, helping you pinpoint exactly what went wrong. So I, I looked up tutorials on how to read the syscon, and I found that you needed a TTL reader, I think is what it's called. And I thought, well, I don't wanna wait one week for that to arrive. I have a Raspberry Pi Pico. I know a lot of us out there do. Is there a way that I could use this to read the syscon off this PlayStation? So I did some research and found one post where somebody successfully did this. And the way that you accomplish this is by turning the Pico into a UART USB bridge. And somebody's already written code for this. I found some GitHub pages that provided that data. Um, so what I'm doing today is providing how I accomplish this and hopefully giving people another tool to help diagnose these PlayStations. All right, with that being said, let's get into the video. Now, first we're gonna start by soldering three wires to the Raspberry Pi Pico. One to GP16, one to GP17, and one to ground. After that's completed, we're gonna move over to the computer. You wanna make sure you press down the boot select button and hold it while you plug the Raspberry Pi into the computer you should hear a sound. Next, we'll need to navigate to the GitHub to grab the UART USB bridge UF2 file. Once we have that, we'll need to install it on the Raspberry Pi. And once the download is complete, you'll want to open it up and then proceed with the previous steps of clicking boot select and plugging your Raspberry Pi into your computer. And it is as simple as dragging and dropping the file straight onto the Raspberry Pi and as soon as you do that, it should close out of the window. Now the next step is revision specific, so it's dependent on the model of PlayStation that you have, but I'll post a link below to make sure that you can find the headers for your syscon. And once you've found what headers you have to solder to, it's important to note that the GP16 header on your Raspberry Pi will go to RXD, and the GP17 header will go to TXD. And ground can go to any ground point on the board. In this example, I just use the ground strip on the side of the motherboard. And one important thing to note before we try to access syscon, you'll need to go to device manager and make sure that you find the COM port that your Raspberry Pi is connected to. Mine was COM4, but yours may be different. And please don't follow the commands that I type in here. It may be different for you depending on the motherboard that you have and the software that you're using. Please refer to the GitHub for your unique situation and follow the guidance from that page. Now, it's okay to try multiple times. As you can see, it took four attempts for it to authenticate. If it doesn't work after about five to 10, check your wiring, you may have crossed something. After you're in, you're able to search for each one of the one through 20 codes and you just reference it to this error page and you should be able to figure out what's going on with your PlayStation. And that's how you use a Raspberry Pi Pico to read Syscon on your PlayStation 3. If you enjoy content like this, please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. The channel is growing faster than I could have ever imagined. So I really appreciate it. And, uh, I don't want any money or anything like that. That's a massive support if you could do that alone. Now, I think this Raspberry Pi can provide a lot of value to the Play PlayStation 3 community, and this is just one more application where we can use it. So 
With that being said, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.